One of the things that fascinates me about the universe is the large variation in scale and how it can be difficult to put things into perspective based on our day-to-day -day interaction with the world. The extremes of the atomic scale and the astronomical scale seem almost unrelatable. However, even something like considering the size of the Earth seems tricky. We spend our days living on it and interacting with it, and yet, how does one go about determining how large this planet we live on is? And I wonder, how long has this information been known? Some research into this question revealed that a little over 2,000 years ago, a Greek man named Eratosthenes was able to come up with a reasonably accurate estimate for the size of the Earth by observing the size of the shadow cast by objects at two different locations. Recently on YouTube, Thunderfoot and the Gentleman Physicist proposed recreating this experiment to determine the size of the Earth by combining measurements of several YouTube viewers. Click the annotation to see their video describing it. I decided that this is something I should do, so I set about joining in. My setup is basically the same as what Thunderfoot showed. For the rod, I used a wooden dowel. To get it to stand up, I superglued it to a thin piece of cardboard. Then I covered the cardboard with a large piece of white paper so that I could mark the location of the shadow on it. I set this up on a table which I made sure was level in my backyard. I put the camera in time-lapse mode and the experiment was on. Unfortunately, it was a little windy that day. I tried to make sure my measurements were recorded at times when the wind had died down. Things were going well until about 12.30 when tragedy struck. A big gust of wind blew over my clock and it took out my vertical rod. I tried to glue the rod back where it was, but it didn't want to stay there. So I got my X-Acto knife and cut a second hole in the paper and glued the rod there. We were back in business. So now that we've got some data, how do we determine the size of the Earth? To do the calculation, you actually need two data points, and you need to know the north-south distance between them. So I decided to pull some data from another user from the comment section of the Gentleman Physicist video. So using Steve Wells' data from Moscow, Idaho, we can proceed with calculating the radius of the Earth. The basis of this calculation is that the Sun is so far away we can assume that the Sun's rays are basically parallel at all latitudes on the Earth. If we can determine the angle the rod makes with the sun's rays, that will tell us the number of degrees latitude between our location and the location where the sun is directly overhead and no shadow at all is cast. Using our apparatus and some basic trigonometry, we can calculate this angle by taking the inverse tangent of the shadow length divided by the rod height. I was measuring in Olathe, Kansas using a 55.9 centimeter rod and the shadow came out to be a minimum of 15.4 centimeters. Performing this calculation with the Moscow data and my Olathe data, I determined the total angular difference between the locations to be 7.1 degrees. Now we can determine the radius of the Earth using the angle and the north-south distance between the two locations. Here is where we need to cheat a little bit. I determined that if Moscow were directly north of my location, it would be 876 kilometers away. However, to calculate this, I had to have some previous knowledge of what the Earth's radius actually is. But to do this experiment, the distance could have been determined by survey. So how did we come out? Using the calculated north-south distance and the angle determined by measurement, I calculated the radius of the Earth to be 7,075 kilometers. The actual Earth's radius is about 6,371 kilometers, so our result is off by about 11%. Now I've just got to wrap my head around the fact that I'm standing more than 6,000 kilometers above the center of the Earth.